Just over two years ago now, GE announced plans to divide its business into three publicly traded companies focused on healthcare, energy, and aviation. GE Healthcare was spun off just over a year ago, and early next month, the last piece will fall into place when GE separates into GE Aerospace and GE Vernova, encompassing its energy business. We sat with the GE CEO who has overseen the restructuring from the start, Larry Culp, and the man who will be CEO of GE Vernova, Scott Strazik. If you go back five years, we really were, I think, tasked with two simple objectives. One was a significant deleveraging of our balance sheet. Secondly, we needed to execute an operational turnaround across the business, but it was particularly acute in our power segment, particularly the gas power business that, that, that Scott ran at the time. So you fast forward, we reduced our debt load by over $100 billion. Scott and the team really executed, I think, a phenomenal turn in gas power and then with the rest of our power segment. And we were sitting there as the pandemic was beginning to lift. We could see the merger of our aircraft leasing business with one of our key competitors, Aircap, coming to uh, a, a quick close. And we really had to decide what's the go forward structure for GE. And given we had had so much success with the decentralization, given that the capital markets clearly liked the businesses but didn't like them together, it was actually an easy decision, one we took a little over two years ago to say, it'll take us a couple of years to pull this off, but when the dust settles, GE Healthcare, GE Vernova, and GE Aerospace will all be on their own bottoms. You may have just answered that in your answer, which is, why'd you pick Scott? No, not to not to speak <laughs> in your, about your, your presence, Scott, but how'd you pick Scott? Is it because of the role he had in the turn, in turnaround? Most definitely. I, I met Scott back August of 18. Yes. I wasn't even in this chair yet. It was the first GE business that I had visited down in Atlanta. And I came away thinking, this is a really strong team, but there's some things that we're doing that probably are working against us. So we began the pivot to focus more on the businesses as opposed to the segment. Scott was running gas power services at the time. We asked him to step up and do a big job to run all of gas power. We knew that was job one with respect to the overall operational turnaround at GE. And he and the team, I think, executed near flawlessly through that. And then he picked up additional responsibility with the rest of the power segment. And then in turn, the renewables businesses. And at each step of the way, Scott stepped up, delivered, built teams. That, that did the same. So when it came time to think about the next CEO for this business as a public entity, Scott was an easy choice. So Scott, now you've got the big job. Uh, I suspect even if it was flawless, to use uh, Larry's term, it was not all that easy to do that turnaround. What in your experience in GE and specifically in that turnaround really do you think prepares you for this big new role? Well, I mean, GE has always been a great laboratory to learn and experiment, and we've always had great people. But I think over the last five to five and a half years, really the lean operating system that we've been implementing and really started with gas, right, right. in 19, where we were on a monthly cadence with Larry and really <laughs> focusing a team that always had great ambition, but did we really have an ability to focus on the critical few customer KPIs every day, while also protecting for the long-term breakthroughs. And the ability to multitask those things, our teams weren't always great with. And that's really a lot of what we were focused on in 19 into 20 together, is to build that rhythm that we could prioritize what mattered most to get the short-term right, but not at the expense of also investing for the long term. And that's a lot of what we worked on in gas power together right. in, in 19. And that was really foundational for gas power. and. It's really what we've been extrapolating across the rest of Vernova. So as you take over this new role, uh, tell me what the opportunities you see and break it down, if you would, between two categories. One is the one you just talked about operationally, your lean approach and what that does. Really more opportunities to really drive that further and how much of it's just a rising tide with energy transition. We are excited about the markets that and, and where they're going. And there are a lot of examples of that today. You know, data centers in the U.S., it represented 2% of the load growth in 2020. Many people think it could be 8% by 2030. At the center of Vernova's strategy is growing its energy business in the midst of a massive transition to more sustainable energy around the world. Its chief sustainability officer, Roger Martella, gives us an example how Vernova will set its priorities in building out the electrical grid in a way that is both good business 
and good for the climate. We know we're going to deploy the technology and run businesses to develop technology to electrify the grid. But from a sustainability perspective, we want to do more than just put capacity on the grid. We want to focus on where are we putting that capacity? How are we helping countries that are struggling to provide affordable, reliable, sustainable electricity? Can we double click on those countries and make sure we're not just going where the phone's ringing, but how can we affirmatively reach out to places in the world to enhance sustainability? when it comes to electrification. Sustainability really is at the heart of everything we're doing. And for us, we define sustainability as the complement of both together, keeping the lights on while decreasing the carbon intensity of the install base every day. And it'd be wonderful if we could wave a magic wand and have no carbon. But the reality is that's not the world we live in. So how do we sustainably electrify the world while making it cleaner every day? They really go together. And to do that, it really does require a complement of technologies. And that's where Vernova is somewhat unique because we've got the power generation technologies with things like gas, nuclear, wind, but we also play across the grid at both moving electrons, orchestrating the grid, and the system's becoming more complicated. And our ability to serve our customers with all of those solutions gives us a unique vantage point. So Larry, as somebody who's about to turn over the keys, if I can put it that way, to power, <laughs> yeah. how do you assess their opportunities going forward? I mean, what, what are the really growth opportunities for Vernova? Well, I think you just hit on it, David, in, in the question, and Scott talking about all the different dimensions of the energy transition. We have excellent exposure, leadership positions, really, in almost all the ones that matter. So I don't really worry about the top line environment in this business and that we couldn't have said that four or five years ago but the world over I think we really are set in that regard so we need to make sure we execute. Uh, how does wind fit into what you're doing because that's been more of a struggle not just for GE but for others as well as opposed to gas power. How do you see wind playing out? You bet it has been an industry wide challenge but if you take a step back and think about the world today gets about 7% of its power from electricity from wind most projections believe by 2040 that needs to be closer to 25%. So wind matters but the reality is we need to industrialize at scale the wind products to a level that it can actually reach those levels and that's really what we're focused on right now is building workhorse products that we can do at scale. We're seeing real progress with that. We've turned our onshore wind business back to profitability the second half of last year with momentum to follow. We're working on doing much of the same with our offshore wind business today. The government plays a large role in Vernova's future as it has seen the public-private partnership strengthen over the last 18 to 24 months. I do think in the electric power system, public-private partnerships are always going to matter. We've built this grid and the system over 100 years on the foundation of public-private partnerships. But there's a lot of other drivers beyond that today. The reality is industries are electrifying, and they're going to electrify either way. We think about EVs, we think about home heating and heat pumps. That's going to happen. And that demand cycle exists regardless, but there's also always going to be a role for that public-private partnership. Jennifer Granholm, the Secretary of Energy, likes to say the energy transition should be private sector-led, enabled by the public sector. And that's just been this fundamental realignment between the public sectors and the private sectors that's given us great tailwinds to go ahead and partner with the government to accelerate innovation and technology.